In this episode, we'll take a look at the Zoom H8 from the perspective of a filmmaker and a podcaster. First up, the entire episode here is being recorded with the Zoom H8, and we're recording with a Rode NTG5 shotgun microphone, which is boom just above me right here. Now, just to kind of run over the specs a little bit, first of all, you have two XLR TRS combination inputs. Those are for both microphones, and you can also plug in hi Z instruments, so that's going to be guitars and basses as well. There are also four additional XLR-only inputs, which can be switched between microphone level or line level. You can also switch on phantom power for each individual input, so you don't have to apply it to all the inputs necessarily, just the ones you want. The H8 records to SD cards. There's a single slot and it records to SD, SDHC, or SDXC cards. That means you can record on an up to 512 gigabyte card. Now, one thing that I really like about the H8 is it has a 3.5 millimeter line output, and that line output also has a tone generator. If none of that makes sense to you, <laughs> what this means in practical terms is, of all of the handy recorders from Zoom, this one makes it the easiest of any of them to connect it to your camera. So if you need to run the audio out of your Zoom H8 into your camera, this makes it super easy to set it up and to calibrate the level so that you get distortion-free audio from your H8 into your camera. It does have an inbuilt speaker, so if you don't happen to have headphones for whatever reason or you want to play back something for a variety of different crew members or people on set. It's not a hi-fi experience, but it is enough just to make sure you got the take. On the bottom of the unit, there is a slot where you can add an optional Bluetooth adapter, which then means you can control the H8 from an iOS app. Now it is iOS only, it's not Android. Don't shoot the messenger, <laughs> but uh, that is a nice addition if you do have an iOS device. The iOS device allows you to do some kind of basic things. It does not allow you to do everything. And honestly, that'd be kind of an entire episode to dive into all the details there, but it is nice to be able to have some remote control. Power is a really strong point of the H8. You do, of course, have a USB micro connector. We'll come back to that, the choice of micro over USB-C, but you can power it via that USB micro port. You can, of course, also power it with four AA batteries, which go into the back of the unit here. And with four Eneloop batteries, just the original Eneloops, I was able to power this powering a single dynamic microphone, so all the phantom power was off, and a set of headphones with an 80 ohm impedance rating, recording the entire time for 13 hours and 20 minutes. So I, I did it that way so that I could get a sense for the longest possible recording time you could get. Now, of course, if you use phantom power, it's going to be significantly less than that, but if you use Eneloop Pro or other higher capacity nickel metal hydride batteries or perhaps lithium batteries, then you could potentially get longer powering times as well. So that's just to give you an idea. Now, for me, for four Eneloop, just standard Eneloop batteries, which have probably at least 50, maybe 100 recharge cycles on them, that was really impressive. I was super impressed that you could do that. So it looks pretty positive on powering this with the AA batteries. Now, of course, via that USB port, you could power it with a USB battery bank for even longer, or if it's connected to your computer, the computer can provide bus power and power the unit as well. Speaking of connecting it to your computer, it is capable of running as an audio interface to your computer in 24-bit up to 96 kilohertz sample rates. And again, if you don't understand what any of this means, it just means you can connect to your computer and you can record to your computer. <laughs> in more detail, it can be used in class compliant mode and just record a stereo mix of all of your inputs to the computer. Or you can go into multi-track mode and it can record up to 12 tracks to your computer. That includes the six XLR inputs, plus if you got an additional module to add on with four more XLR inputs, you could record all of those individual microphone inputs plus a stereo mix of all those, making a total of 12 tracks. So in the case of Windows, you will need an ASIO driver to make that happen, which you can download from the Zoom site. In the case of Mac, you just plug it in and you can configure it to run all 12 channels in. It is also a two out, which means you can play back audio from your computer to the headphone jack here if you wanted to. There's a six second pre-record. The pre-record option is nice because what that means is if you are late pressing the record button, it actually, as soon as you press the record button, it goes back six seconds in time and captures all that audio as well. So if you're a little bit slow on that record, you can still capture some of that. 
As a first in the H series of recorders from Zoom, you have a color touchscreen, and it's surprisingly good. I expected, I guess my expectations were lower, <laughs> and they actually came through. It's a very nice screen. The resolution is good enough. It's not super high resolution, but it is, I would say it's fairly similar to the H6 screen, except larger and touchscreen. And it has the same problem. So if you go outdoors, it's a little bit difficult to read, to be honest. But otherwise, it's been very nice to work with so far. Included with the H8 is the XY stereo recording module that has a stereo set of microphones that can be angled to record at 90 degrees or 120 degrees. So you can get a couple of different stereo pickups there. And that also has a 3.5 millimeter microphone input. So if you want to attach, for example, a lavalier microphone, you can do that there. Now, the cool thing is, of course, you can use all of the interchangeable modules that you could use on the H6 or the H5. And there are some new ones coming out as well, including a VR module, which is pretty exciting. So there's also an ORTF stereo recording module. So if you're into that kind of thing, there's a mid-side recording module. And you just got a lot of different options, a shotgun module. Kind of nice to have that interface on this type of recorder. Now, one of the interesting things I did here with the H8, which they have not done in the previous H-series recorders, is basically when you first turn on the unit, you're presented with three different modes to operate in. One for field recording, one for podcasting, and one for music. So it really kind of tunes the interface and the display based on the type of thing that you're recording. So here, for example, in field recording, it just shows the meters of all of the microphone inputs that are on. In the podcast module, it gives you some sound pads as well. So you can press those to play back pre-recorded sound clips, little jingles, stingers, things like that, or even pre-recorded interviews if you wanted to do something like that. So that makes it very much optimized for those different types of things. And I think that's going to be pretty important as we talk about a little bit later. The H8 is a really kind of interesting device from the standpoint that it's set up to do a lot of different things. And the challenge when you do that is that when you're set up to do a lot of different things, you generally don't do any of them very well. But the nice thing about this interface with the color touchscreen is that it really sort of customizes the experience based on what you're recording to make it better for that particular case. Now, there are compressors, limiters, and gates for each individual channel on the H8. Now, the only limitation is you can only use one of those three at a time, which was a little bit of a bummer for me. But on the other hand, it's nice that they have them. So compressor will even out your overall sound. Uh, the limiter will help prevent you from clipping and the noise gate will help reduce noise if you're in a kind of a noisy room. There are metal quarter 20 threads on the back, which means you can attach this to a tripod or maybe to your camera, a friction arm, all those types of things. It makes it very versatile in terms of attaching it to other devices. The headphone output on the H8 seemed decent to me. It is not something I've done extensive testing with yet so far, but I wasn't getting a lot of hiss or anything like that in the headphone output, so that's a good sign. So I was using a set of Sony MDR7506 headphones, so I believe those are somewhere, they're less than 100 ohms, I think they're 70 some ohms, so something like that. So again, as long as you're not using audiophile headphones, I think this headphone amp is gonna be good. And for all this, it's priced at $399 US at the time of this review. Now, no product is perfect. Let's kind of talk about some of the things that I've found so far that didn't really love. First of all, there's that USB micro port. Now, this is a little bit of a head scratcher. I just recently reviewed the Zoom PodTrack P4 and that has two USB-C ports on it. So I, I have no explanation for why there's a USB micro port on this thing. Um, I don't know. I Is it a deal killer? You can decide that for yourself. It's just a little bit of an annoyance to me um, and I don't really understand why they did that. As I mentioned before, the app is iOS only, so I'm very sorry on behalf of Zoom, although I don't know why I'm apologizing for Zoom. I paid for this with my own money. <laughs> um, but you cannot control it remotely with an Android device. It has to be an iOS device. And then one other thing that I've noticed is that Zoom has kind of a tendency to do this in a lot of their field recorders and handy recorders is that in many cases, you can only use a certain feature at a time, and it kind of disables the opportunity to use other features. So a great example of that is if you use a compressor, for example, you cannot also use the noise gate at the same time on that same channel. So I think that's a limit in terms of its overall processing power, because I assume that's all implemented in the digital domain. It's all digital processing software. Uh, so for whatever reason, some of those things get disabled when you're using one or the other. 
Let's get you a couple sample recordings here. First of all, some sound effects recordings outdoors, and then a podcast sample. Um, what I'd like to talk about is first the favorite, your favorite class in university that you've taken so far, Emma, and that you took in an undergraduate. I, I mean, will. Oh, Emma. Okay. Because I have an easy answer and that is, I don't know. What? I've only been through one year so far. Okay. I would say marching band. Marching band's a fun course. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, yeah, that would be a fun one for sure. Yeah. Okay. I, I, uh, Yeah. I met a lot of good people in my university marching band. That was fun. Cool. Yeah. Okay. All right, Danny, what was your favorite course? I had a lot of courses that I really enjoyed, but I'd have to say just for total impact would be Geology 210, which was a two-week geology field class that met before the start of the fall semester. <laughs> Distorted guitars. You mean distorted guitars? Distorted guitars. One burning question I think a lot of people will ask is, can you run gain-hungry microphones like the Shure SM7B into the H8 and get a good clean signal? And I think the answer is yes. Here's a sample. Probably the most common question I would expect to hear from this is, if I'm using something like a Shure SM7B microphone, it's a dynamic microphone, very popular amongst podcasters and in the broadcast industry. Can I do that directly into the Zoom H8 or do I need something like a cloud lifter or a FET head? And the answer is, it seems like you do not. Um, I'm at max gain here, so I'm at 10 out of 10 on the gain dial for this input. We're peaking somewhere around minus six, maybe a little bit more. And um, so there's an example of what you can expect. Let me go ahead and just I'll be silent for just a minute, and we'll see how much noise it picks up here in the room. We did a little bit of a self-noise performance test with the dummy XLR connector, which has a 150 ohm resistor across pins two and three. For those who don't understand what I'm talking about, just stick with me here. We're gonna make sense of this really soon. Essentially what this does is it simulates the load of a dynamic microphone without picking up any sort of outside sound. So it's like putting a dynamic microphone into an input, but without the microphone picking up any sound. And what we found was that the self-noise sat at minus 70 dB RMS max, which is actually really quite good, and I think a significant improvement over the other H-series recorders. So nice step forward there. Now, when I plugged in and recorded with an SM7B, measuring that silent portion after normalizing to minus 23 LUFS stereo, we found it was basically the same. It was right around minus 70, minus 69 dB RMS max. So it seems like these preamplifiers are significantly better. Now, Zoom doesn't put the specifications on their website. I don't know how much gain these supply, but they do put the specifications for their new PodTrack P4, and they say that that one can supply 70 dB of gain. And what I found was that this one doesn't seem to supply as much gain as the PodTrack P4. So uh, they're clearly not using the same preamplifiers or maybe the similar design, but that one has, you know, can supply even more gain because you're, you know, they've designed it for podcasting. And so a lot of times when you're podcasting, you're using a dynamic microphone like a Shure SM7B, you need more gain. I don't know what they're doing here exactly, but these do not appear to be the exact same preamplifiers. However, the performance on the H8's preamplifiers seems quite good. And I think it's enough gain for most people, unless you have a super quiet voice, to work with very gain-hungry dynamic microphones like the SM7B. All right, let's wrap things up here with who is this device for? And I think what's very interesting about the Handy Recorders, and I think they've been designed this way from the very start, they are meant to be very versatile recorders, something that can be used in a lot of different types of situations for a lot of different types of recordings. And that, I think, is definitely showing through here with the H8. When you first turn it on, you're presented with the three main modes it can operate in, field recorder, music, and podcast. So they're really trying to create a device that can work for a lot of situations. And I think that's important to keep in mind because when you have something that is designed to fill a lot of different scenarios, 
it's not usually super good at any of them. It usually has to make some compromises. And I think that's the case with the H8. Now, I don't want that to be discouraging. What I'm saying with this is really, if you need something that's versatile and can work in a lot of different situations, that's where I think the H8 is a good choice. Let me give you one example here for podcasting. If you're a podcaster and you're going to be podcasting with, say, three or four people all in the same room, normally what you'd like to do is plug all the microphones, of course, into the recorder and then have a set of headphones for each of the participants in the podcast. And I think the reason that headphones for everyone is important is because a lot of people, when they first at least start working with microphones, don't have very good microphone techniques. So they tend to look off in other directions and their voice falls off, especially if they're using a dynamic microphone. So for me, it's really important for everyone to have a set of headphones. Well, that's where the H8, while it can do podcast recording, isn't really set up to do a separate headphone feed for every single participant. Now you can do six different inputs at the same time. That's really cool but you don't have a separate headphone output for every person. You have one headphone output. And so that's something that's important to keep in mind. If you are just buying for podcasting, then I think the PodTrack P4 or the LiveTrack L8 are probably better choices because you do have multiple outputs for more than one set of headphones. All right, if you are a filmmaker, then that's another thing. So there is the field recording mode on here, which can work for filmmaking and you can connect and feed the audio out of the H8 into your camera. So that all works. I think that if you are serious about filmmaking, then one of the Zoom F series recorders is probably gonna be a better option for you. So that's an example where those recorders, the field series recorders are definitely optimized for filmmaking. They each have more outputs, so you can send audio to a wireless feed for a director, for example, plus another one to the camera, a lot of times they have two balanced outputs plus a 3.5 millimeter output on the F4 and the F8N. So that gives you more options as well. You can run maybe to a consumer grade camera, plus you can run a two line out, left and right stereo mix somewhere else, or you can use those to feed wireless feeds to a, two different groups and have different mixes going to each group. So there's a lot more flexibility there for filmmaking in particular. But if you're doing just very simple, straightforward filmmaking, without a big crew, then an H8 could work. So those are the kind of nuances that I think are really important to keep in mind. So if you're serious about filmmaking, probably go with the Zoom F series. If you, again, need something that's versatile that could work for podcasting and working with consumer grade cameras for filmmaking, then that's something where the H8 could work very well for you. Overall, there is a look at the Zoom H8. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Bye.